The dry wind of the Texas desert cut through the air as the gates of Giga, Texas slowly opened, revealing a heavy silence that seemed to hide more than it allowed you to see. Inside, something was about to transform not only Tesla, but the entire concept of modern mobility. Engineers walked with calculated, almost ritualistic steps, as if they knew that each of their movements was building the future of millions of people. In the center of the hangar, surrounded by machines that looked more like sleeping metallic creatures, rested the prototype of the Tesla Model 2. Nothing about it screamed for attention. On the contrary, its simplicity concealed the greatest innovation ever created by the company. And it was precisely this simplicity that caught the attention of those who understood the magnitude of what was to come. When the team began the test cycle that morning in 2026, there was an atmosphere of such strong anticipation that it seemed to carry its own electricity. It wasn't just another car being started. It was the world's first vehicle equipped with a full-scale aluminum ion battery. The engineers exchanged glances as the monitors began thermal tracking, something that had previously been crucial in lithium batteries. Now, however, it was almost irrelevant. The new battery remained cool, stable, quiet. The silence of the engine was nothing new for a Tesla, but the silence of the battery was. Nothing vibrated, nothing heated up, nothing seemed to suffer any strain. For the first time, it felt as if physics was being bent before human eyes. The debate about range, which had dominated the industry for over a decade, seemed to finally be declining at that moment. What really mattered now wasn't how many miles the car could travel on a full charge, but how long someone needed to sit, idle recharging. While tests showed that the Model 2 achieved a full recharge in 7 to 10 minutes, the entire team realized that the conversation about electric cars had just changed. It no longer mattered whether someone drove 300, 400 or 500 miles. The crucial point was that you could fill the battery faster than you could fill the gas tank. The recharging anxiety that had plagued drivers for years evaporated in the face of that almost surreal speed. The most intriguing graphs were those related to durability. With each cycle, the battery demonstrated a resilience bordering on technological absurdity. 10,000 complete cycles meant more than 4 million kilometers, something that simply didn't exist in the automotive market. It was like buying a car that would outlive several drivers' lifetimes. This challenged the entire logic of the industry. How to sell new cars if they wouldn't break down anymore? How to maintain an economy built on obsolescence if Tesla had just created something that refused to age? The engineers knew that this durability was not just a technological advantage, but a direct blow to the backbone of all global competition. Perhaps the most surprising news was the cost. In a market where 50 kilowatt lithium batteries cost over $6,500, seeing an aluminum battery cost just over $3,000 seemed almost a joke. But it wasn't. There were the reports, the invoices, the cold, unsentimental mathematical calculations. The difference of over $3,000 per battery wasn't just economics. It was a strategic weapon. It was the kind of advantage that would destroy margins, bankrupt manufacturers, and reshape global competition. With incentives from the US government, the Model 2 could be sold for $12,000. That was cheaper than many premium motorcycles. It was the birth of the truly popular electric car. Looking at the redesigned chassis, it was evident that the battery wasn't there to be an isolated component. It was a structural part, integrated like a vital organ into a perfect body. This reduced weight, increased safety, and reinforced rigidity. The car became lighter, stronger, and more efficient at the same time. Engineers noted that this integration allowed the Model 2 to gain between 10 and 15 extra miles of range at no additional cost. It was like finding free energy simply by repositioning components. The Gigapress, that 100-ton giant, poured blocks of cast aluminum with almost biological precision, creating a design that seemed to have been sculpted, not manufactured. The new battery was much more than a functional component. It was a manifesto against the problems associated with lithium. There was no risk of fire, explosions, or overheating. Extreme tests showed that aluminum could withstand temperatures between minus 40 and plus 80 degrees without showing instability. This eliminated the need for complex cooling systems, further reducing the weight and overall cost of the vehicle. In cold markets, where the performance of lithium batteries plummeted, the aluminum battery remained constant, 
almost indifferent to the climate. It was robust, reliable, and incredibly simple, a rare and dangerous combination for anyone competing with Tesla. Meanwhile, the global market watched with growing concern. Automakers that had invested billions in lithium battery factories began to realize that their investments could become irrelevant almost overnight. Abundant and cheap aluminum was about to replace an expensive and limited metal. The global supply chain trembled before the impending change. Countries that depended on lithium mining feared losing relevance, and countries with vast bauxite reserves began to understand that they were about to enter a new economic era. The geopolitical balance was shifting silently, but profoundly, driven by a piece of light and shiny metal. It wasn't just technology, it was psychology. When people discovered they could recharge a car in 10 minutes, the decision-making paradigm would shift. Autonomy would cease to be an emotional argument. Downtime would become the new indicator of choice. Going to a cafe, ordering a sandwich, having a quick coffee, and leaving with a fully recharged car. This experience would redefine daily life. Mobility would no longer depend on planning. It would become spontaneous. The electric car would finally reach the level of convenience that had always been lacking for its absolute market dominance. Inside Tesla, the team felt the pressure of something bigger than a product. It was a race to destabilize the competition before it had time to react. The Model 2 wasn't just an affordable car. It was a corporate military strategy, a simultaneous assault on range, cost, durability, charging speed, and infrastructure. No other company could compete in all these areas at the same time. The pieces had been positioned, and the automotive world was about to face its first all-out war for technological supremacy. With each passing day, internal reports grew more optimistic. Production seemed scalable, the automated lines functioned flawlessly, and the final product displayed impressive consistency. The more the team tested, the more they believed they were witnessing something unprecedented. If the Model 2 launched exactly as planned, it would redefine the very meaning of an economical car. And this made it clear that the launch wouldn't just be a milestone for Tesla, it would be a milestone for humanity. At the same time, consumers began to notice signs of change. News leaked, rumors intensified, and videos of secret tests surfaced on social media. The public wondered what it would be like to drive a car so cheap, so quick to charge, and so durable that it practically didn't age. Some believed it was exaggerated marketing. Others knew that when it came to Elon Musk, exaggeration was often just the beginning of the truth. And this duality further fueled collective curiosity. When the first demonstration units were spotted on roads near the factory, the curious eyes of ordinary drivers captured the moment as if it were a rare sight. The Model 2 had no extravagant details. Its simple design concealed the revolutionary soul it carried beneath its body. The absence of visual eccentricity was intentional. Tesla wanted the car to convey accessibility, not luxury. It was a work built to be used, multiplied, and spread throughout the world. As field tests progressed, it became evident that the battery not only delivered performance, but also aged like fine wine. Instead of degrading, it showed subtle improvements in the first few cycles. This puzzled experts, but it was explained by the unique ionic stability of aluminum. The chemistry seemed to work in favor of the user, not against them. It was almost poetic, a battery that improved with use, something unthinkable with previous technologies. The environmental impact was also significant. Aluminum extraction, despite requiring energy, could be entirely powered by renewable sources. Unlike lithium, whose mining often left deep scars on the landscape and nearby communities, aluminum offered a cleaner and safer path. The planet literally breathed easier with that change. A cheap, durable, affordable and environmentally friendly car was something that seemed more like science fiction than modern engineering. And then came the big shock. Tesla revealed the estimated final cost for American consumers. After incentives, the Model 2 could cost as little as $12,000. The industry froze. How could they compete with that? Combustion engine cars, decades of refinement behind them, couldn't compete with something so cheap, so fast, and so safe. And competing electric cars, stuck with lithium batteries, simply had no answer. For the first time, it seemed Tesla didn't just want to participate in the market, it wanted to destroy it and rebuild it from scratch. 
Meanwhile, banks began studying the impact of durability on credit lines. With such a long lifespan, financing could be rethought, insurance could drop drastically, depreciation would be lower, resale value would increase. The entire automotive finance system was facing a paradox, more short-term profit or long-term survival, and none of them knew exactly which path to take. The consumer experience would be profoundly transformed. There would no longer be a need to plan long trips in advance. There would be no more panic when the battery drops to 5%. There would be no need to search for ultra-fast chargers in distant locations. A 10-minute stop would solve everything. Spontaneous, almost impulsive mobility would become a natural part of daily life. And this freedom was more powerful than any range number printed in a technical brochure. Inside Tesla, the laboratories functioned like sacred temples of the future. Each test performed seemed like a silent prayer laid at the feet of technology. They knew that when the world witnessed the official launch, the reaction would be one of utter disbelief. The Model 2 wasn't just a new car. It was proof that technological limits were temporary illusions and that humankind would always find ways to defy the impossible. It was also impossible to ignore the geopolitical impact of the change. Countries that had previously dominated lithium production watched with growing tension the expansion of aluminum batteries. The new technology reduced dependence on specific markets. Suddenly aluminum, a common and abundant metal, took the place that had previously belonged to lithium. And this redistributed economic power in ways that few analysts were prepared to calculate. In internal meetings, Elon Musk emphasized that this battery represented freedom. Freedom from extreme costs, freedom from scarcity, freedom from technological limitations. He knew the world hadn't yet grasped the magnitude of the change, but he also knew that understanding would come quickly once the Model 2 arrived at dealerships. This was the most strategic move since the launch of the Model 3. The competition began to act in desperation. Lithium battery manufacturers announced changes, partnerships and sudden breakthroughs. Production lines were accelerated, research was intensified, and optimistic speeches emerged as a last attempt to contain the storm. But it was too late. The aluminum battery was not a promise, it was a reality, and it was already being produced. Consumers also perceived an emotional shift. For the first time, an electric car seemed truly accessible. It wasn't necessary to be rich, live in a big city, or have technical knowledge. It was a simple, inexpensive and revolutionary car. A car designed for the people. It was the beginning of an era where sustainable mobility was finally becoming accessible to the average citizen. Every detail of this technology seemed to scream efficiency. The reduced weight of 136 kilograms compared to traditional batteries made the Model 2 a light and precise machine. The driving sensation would be smoother, faster, lighter. It was like driving a vehicle that responded instantly to the driver's intention, eliminating delays typical of heavier cars. Walking through the warehouses, it was impossible not to notice how the machines seemed to operate in harmony. The Gigapress poured molten aluminum with surgical precision, creating what many called the perfect skeleton for an electric car. The integration of the structural pack into the chassis eliminated dozens of parts previously considered essential. Now, everything was simpler, stronger and more beautiful. Durability tests showed that the new design was nearly indestructible. The car absorbed impacts more efficiently, protected occupants with impressive rigidity and exhibited less structural deformation. The battery integrated into the floor acted as a shield, reinforcing the vehicle's integrity. Safety ceased to be merely statistical and became a physical sensation. The global market began to realize that something much bigger was happening. The Tesla Model 2, with its aluminum battery, represented not just a technological innovation. It represented the definitive breaking of economic barriers. It was the first time that performance, accessibility and safety met in a single point, without compromise. With each passing week, more images leaked, more tests were released, and more people began to believe they were witnessing the greatest technological leap since the invention of the modern electric motor. Forums buzzed with speculation, calculations, and optimistic predictions. The internet seemed unable to contain the growing enthusiasm. When analysts began calculating the long-term cost of ownership, they realized something even more frightening for the competition. 
Maintaining a Model 2 would be cheaper than maintaining a high-performance electric bicycle. The battery practically didn't degrade. Cooling systems were minimal. Maintenance was almost non-existent. The savings were almost ridiculously favorable to the consumer. Tesla knew it was building more than just a product. It was building a symbol. The Model 2 symbolized the definitive transition to clean, accessible, and mass-market energy. It was the first truly democratic electric car, and that had profound social implications. It changed the relationship between people and technology. It changed the way society moved. The aluminum battery also offered another powerful advantage, chemical stability. Nothing about it seemed to want to react in the violent way that lithium often did. There was no risk of thermal runaway, no thermal leakage, no spontaneous combustion. It was stable. It was calm. It was reliable. A true energy rock. Tesla also realized that, with this technology, it could finally expand its operations to more remote regions. Charging the vehicle would no longer depend on large, complex networks. A basic fast charger would suffice, and the car would be ready in minutes. This would completely change life in rural and peripheral areas. The compact battery design also allowed for unexpected internal optimizations. With more space, the interior could be reorganized to offer superior comfort. The dashboard could be cleaner, lighter and more intuitive. The car became not only efficient but also enjoyable for everyday use. The first test drivers reported impressive sensations. The acceleration was smooth and continuous. The reduced weight allowed for more precise cornering. The absolute silence of the battery created an almost spiritual driving experience. There were no vibrations, no mechanical noises, no lag. It was as if the car anticipated their commands. As the official videos began to be prepared, Tesla found itself facing the responsibility of communicating such a significant change that could be misinterpreted. How to explain to the world that a battery so cheap, so fast and so durable was real? How to convince people accustomed to exaggerated marketing that this was not an exaggeration, but pure reality? The impact on the energy sector was also enormous. Fast charging would alleviate consumption peaks and better distribute energy demand. Cities could implement ultra-fast chargers without fear of power outages. Energy management would become smarter. Experts knew that Tesla was about to start a new technological race. Competing companies would have to reinvent their research lines.